Uh, my name is Veronika Gregorko. I am the director of the Lean Institute in Slovakia. Hope that you will visit our country once. And my role today is to be a host of our honored guest, uh, Marek Demchak, the Lean coach from the Violent Group. And Marek will uh, let you deep dive a bit better to their uh, Lean production system will explain you how they see the lean, how they implement it in the daily base, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. So, Marek, stage is yours. Enjoy your time. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica, for a very nice introduction. And I'm directly going to share my screen. So to deep dive into the into the topic. And Veronica, I just need one yes if you see my screen. Yes, I see. And I hope cool. you get to. Cool. So I just use the worst question someone can use when starting a presentation, and that's can you see my screen or hear well? Or hear, can you hear me well? So, uh, are okay. you here as a ghost? You know, asking, are you here, <laughs> Marek? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here I am. So let's speak a little bit about the Violent Group production system, and I'm very, very honored that I can be the person to telling you about how Violent is producing products and you can see in the pool what kind of products we have actually there's only one correct answer and i jump directly to that actually what is the outcome of what we are doing in violin we're producing we're producing boilers we are producing uh, wall hanging boilers floor standing boilers and we're producing heat pump as well so our we have a lot of variation we have a lot of brands uh that are in our portfolio what we produce actually i guess you are familiar with uh, with many of them at least you know the brand Violent. It's our premium brand. We can also we have brands in different countries in Slovakia, for example, Proterm, Proterm products we produce in uh, Turkey. We have Demirducum, in uh, France you may know Sonia Deval, and there's there's all the brands that belongs to to Violent family, to Violent group, actually. So that's slightly about how the final products look like, and uh, let me also introduce the Violent in few numbers. So. Yeah, Violent Group is a 100 person family owned family since 1874. So, yeah, quite a nice history behind. Uh, number one, world market leader for central heating appliances. That's our core business. Uh, we have 20 national sales companies, 340,000 installer partners. And you may see also a nice number, which is 2.7 billion sales revenue in 2020. Um, Inside the company, you will find more than 70 nationalities. So we are really multinational company uh, being present in 60 countries with our business activities. So there are eight heating technology brands under one roof. I already mentioned a few of them. And overall, Wyland has 50,000 employees staff worldwide. So yeah, let's say it's a big company it's not a small one and we can say it's also quite successful uh company overall but that's just few words to introduce what the violin is what i'd like to speak today about it's production of of, of violet room so what is the production system and where are the production sites so on the picture you can see the entrance lobby of a trenching plant in slovakia where I'm coming from actually, and where I'm currently present. So good evening from Slovakia. And uh, on this entrance to the trenching plant, you may see several production sites over the world. So in Slovakia, we have two, we have a module plants. There are all the guts that go inside the boiler and trenching. And then in Skalica, we have a final assembly plant where we produce uh, wall hanging boilers, floor standing boilers, and heat pumps as well. Then we have uh, three plants in Germany, Roding, Remscheid, Bergheim. Remscheid is the, is the headquarter, is the where the Valen was born. Then we have one plant in Belper in England and one plant in Nond. So maybe you're familiar, familiar with our sites. Definitely, I guess you're familiar with our uh, brands and, and products. So those are the sites where we produce uh, boilers or parts of it. And uh, today I'm going to speak about Violin Group production system. So it's actually the way how we how we produce boilers. Not exactly. So yeah, I mean, each production company has its own production system somehow because they, they produce and maybe each company has a different definition what the production system is. 
for our, us in Vyland, we focus mostly or strictly on the production environment. So our production system is really focused in, in, in uh, production. And uh, it's the way how we produce, but it's the way how we communicate and cooperate. So by violent reproduction system, we may understand um, homogeneous and binding system of cooperation that creates a learning environment, that creates an environment when we can make mistakes, when we can learn and when we can improve. And we can improve in order to get the satisfaction of our final customer. So to achieve that, uh, Violent has a philosophy in its production, and uh, this philosophy is spread around all the all the plants. And the agents that spread that uh, actually philosophy or support plants in implementing that philosophy are called group coaches uh, for production system, and I'm one of them. So I have two and other colleagues and uh, one boss, so a group of four people. On the central level, we are taking care for violent group production system. It's another lean department. We are centrally supporting plants locally. So me responsible for uh, supporting of plants in Slovakia, which is Trenčín and, Bel and um, Skalica, and also plant in Belper, and two other my colleagues taking care for another six production sites uh, of, of Vylan. And I'm mentioning that because we don't have a lean department, we have coaches, and I come to that again after after a while, how the organigram looks like. So our goal is not to do continuous improvement projects in our department. Our goal is to support people that they do the continuous improvement projects with the lean in their mind as towards lean on their departments, on their area of responsibility. And uh, to follow that philosophy, uh, we have defined in Valand our vision and mission for production system. And uh, this vision is as it states, as you might read right now, saying that VPS, Valand Production System, inspires, empowers, and enables everybody to improve each day. So that's where we want to be once. So yeah, we have some success stories in some parts. We already are leaving the dream, but still we are as you see, we're a multinational company and it's a never ending story. It's a continuous improvement, but that's for sure, you know. Mission is actually what we are currently doing. So how we want to achieve that mission, that vision. And the mission is that VPS aims to create and sustain a culture of continuous improvement. So maybe better, it's better said that VPS is creating a sustainable culture of continuous improvement, because that's where our focus is right now. To to create or to shape this better word to shape the culture towards a culture of continuous improvement and uh, this vision and mission has a uh, quite old it's not a child uh, next year will, will become a teenager so vps started 2000 and um, 2012 and since that we have this mission and vision and we we went a certain journey. So there are some learnings, there are some successes that some failures we make as well, because we're a learning organization and we want to become one. So now I would say we are kind of at the edge, at the edge of maybe going in the same direction, maybe changing something. So I think 10 years, we have quite a lot of proof that something is working and something something is, something is not. So uh, for VPS 10 years ago, we define 10 principles, 10, 10 lean principles, which I'm quite sure you're quite, uh, uh, quite familiar with. Not 10, it's seven, seven principles. You're quite familiar with six of them. And one is quite unique. And it's unique because it was unique to me when I entered the company. I said, okay, what do you want to improve here? It looks quite good already. So there are some lean principles, I can see them. But what is the first one? What is the smiley person with, with this Nike, Nike mark? And if the first principle of a, on our lean journey, on our lean philosophy we want to apply and get under the people's skin in production is be motivated, enjoy your work. So really focus is on the individual, it's on, on a person. And by this principle, what we want to achieve, we want to people get to take care about their own environment. So they should be able to 
change the environment if they don't like it. So if there is something they are not happy with, so there should be something how they can change it. Maybe by proposing some ideas for improvement so we can do it differently in this way. So they, they can show that they care for uh, for their environment. So and they also should be able to to improve it. So that's maybe that was that was something new for me when I get into into Thailand four years ago. And then all the others are quite uh, quite known. We have a create value. Of course, value creation is the core of our, our production system. Let it flow, creating flow, flow of material, flow of information, keep on pooling. Of course, we're trying to apply the pool in the way how we produce. And I'm going to show you one, one, one example of what it may look like in our production. Uh, synchronize as another principle, synchronize not just the production, but also logistic, internal logistic with our production, uh, synchronize supply chain management to production and, and so on. Then we have keep it simple. So to make people smile and to do do things in a simple way. And that's the way they, how they can also actually uh, change their environment by proposing simple ideas, easy ones. And the, six, the seventh one, the last one is make it robust. So we want to create or produce the same quality over the time. So that's one of our leading principles too. So those are the guiding principles we're following for 10 years already. It's almost December, so I can tell that. So uh, that's what creates the philosophy in, uh, in Vala Group production system. So out of the seven, the first one was something surprising to me. And the second surprising thing to me was the approach, how we approach projects inside production, how we pro approach improve, improvements projects. For that, we have VIP approach. So what we put on the first place is value. So for us, value is the core. So if you are proposing a project, an improvement project, there must be a value behind meaning there must be one or two or three out of seven principles direct, directly visible and applicable. We don't look on profit because we think that if we are looking for value in the first place and we have involved the right people and we involve many people to the project, then we will achieve a profit. It's kind of common sense that if you do things right, you will achieve the right results. So we don't do an ROI return on investment before the project. Of course, for big industrial projects, we do that. That's no, no doubt about it. What I'm speaking now, it's, it's a part of continuous improvement, small projects, small activities, continuous improvement driven activities, where instead of looking for profit, why should we bother with that? We should look for value, what value it brings. Is it either flow? It is about synchronization. It's about uh, keep on pulling. It is making things simple or it's about enjoying your work. So some ideas are really about changing the environment so people feel better at work. And it can go from standard work till through 5S or even making the nicer environment in where they work inside the, inside the production. So to show you a little bit of how our production look like, uh, I'd like to show you a picture from Skalica plant from Slovakia. And with your lean Googles, you might directly see several principles implemented. So you might notice that we have uh, one piece flow production. So you see several trolleys on one eye shape production line. Um, you see several stations, let's say that 10, 10 stations or 13 stations like that. Uh, we have a trolley system, a trolley that is attached to conveyor. So maybe it's not visible directly from the picture, but it's a conveyor behind, which actually is pulling the trolleys in a certain tact. That tact varies from I don't know, 90 seconds to two minutes, depends on the variation, depends on the product we produce in lines. You may see um, management system, you may see displays with standard work, or instructions how to do the work properly. You may see pick to light the system, to be incumbent system, and many other things which we develop over time. And which I'm not saying that Valent Group production system brought everything, but it brought biggest part because we have in total like 16, 16 lean tools which you can identify in our plans. But if I should choose one, and that's my opinion as, as an observer of the system, 
one system, one tool that actually helps a lot how the production look like today and how we are able to successfully produce product is one piece flow, really producing in one piece flow. We had it before, before 10 years ago, slightly different. So one piece flow look like U shape cell with uh, two trolleys inside circle, outside circle, they can overcome each other. What VPS brought is more, more clarity into one piece flow. It doesn't need to be always U shape cell, it can be I shape. And what one piece flow brought is also to balancing on the line. Now we use MTM analysis to really balance uh, balance uh, the workflow on all the stations, even if we're producing several variances, I mean, 100 variances you can produce them on the uh, production line. So that's actually, I guess you might already see on, uh, uh, on, on that picture. You may see small Kanban, middle Kanban, we call it picking for different variances and, and so on, so on. That's are the principle in use by using several lean methods or lean tools how to how to implement the change if you have several like examples uh, our guests for example by the usage of the digital tools as presented by marek feel free to share with us this in chat or you know that we have a short time so in the case of any question you can just easily ask them in questions and answers like about the details what is on this photo how it works what are the pros and cons of this system, because I'm sure that all of you has experiences that sometimes digitalization is not the, the best way and the easiest way to implement. Maybe that's that's my question, Marek. What was the, the biggest value added? What you got by this? What are you showing us? And what was the biggest challenge? <laughs> Actually, the biggest challenge at the beginning was to explain people that One Piece Flow is not U-shaped cell. That one piece flow is the philosophy, it's the way you produce. It's not how the cell looks like. That might sound funny, but there was a certain level of um, uh, resistance in, order, in understanding, which is over for several years. And uh, the biggest benefit, what this brings is actually standardization inside the plants. So if every production line, imagine you have 11 lines in one in one production site, and they look the same. So you standardize quite a lot from technology, from regs, from the logistic system. So this standardization, which is brought by One Piece Flow, it's also tremendous impact and great uh, added value in, in the way we produce. And how the operators got this change? You know, because some people are resistant for the changes. And for the digital changes, they, they see it as an obstacle, as something new. Uh, now I think they will be against if we want to introduce something else. So they get used to it. At the beginning, I think it was the opposite. So only time cures. So when they start to work, they see it is not that so much difficult. It's not so boring because there is a certain schedule how, how they change. So they don't always work on the same uh, same position and station. So it brings variety, it doesn't bring more work, it actually brings slightly less work. So if you, and you're very aware in, in Skalica plan, you see people are not in a hurry, so they have enough time. So you may even say they are not productive because they are standing, but the opposite is true. They are productive, that it's a tact loss, which we can, we need to have because of a different variance is producing at a uh, lot size one. So, and to have a several variances on, online. So. Yeah, there was a resistance, but with the time, they appreciate the kind of work. And have you involved them in uh, this new system preparation? Or just after you inform them that, aha, that's new, that's something what you should use, and it's great? That's a good question, but I was not there at the time. So I cannot uh, answer that precisely if they were involved. I think with the, we had at that time learning cell, and the learning cell then were involved. Not all of them, but uh, representatives to my answer in, in, in that way. Interesting. Sure, go ahead. Just uh, I was interested and I'm sure that some yeah, of the viewers do. Few, few, few more slides actually before we end. I, I see the time is running. Uh, another tool we use is value stream mapping. This is just example. This exact one is from Bozu plant. It's not like we use it daily. But we use it at, at the beginning and in, in the past. Now, maybe the usage is slightly lacking. It depends from plan to plan. So 
but those two tools out of, out of the 16 we have in our toolbox, I think those are very important. Value stream mapping and one piece flow because they focus on product flow, on improving the process flow. All the others methods, they more focus on operation, uh, on, on, the, on the workflow, how we, how we do stuff. So just to give you just a taste of uh, actually how the methods look in, in, in Valon in, in, in practice. So you see value stream mapping, you know, and those small dots, which maybe are not so clear, you see this is, those are our principles. There are, are they supporting or they are violating while, while doing the processes, as you may see. Coming a little bit back to, 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 to the point when I heard supporting the local application of Lean philosophy. And in each plan, we have also plan coaches. So two people currently part-time, some of them starting to work full-time on uh, VPS activities, that they are locally supporting planning and, and doing lean initiatives. So bringing VPS principles to life, uh, applying uh, a VIP approach, but also managing or coordinating several improvement processes like VPS ideas or improvement ideas, shop floor management, and uh, small project roadmap. So not building a lean department, but building the culture by helping people to apply lean thinking in their daily job. And it might look like this. This picture is from Nantes, from, from France. You may see our production board, which we use for shop floor management. You may see yeah, how actually look in our plan, how we uh, visualize the production size. In, on the left top corner, you might see even our principles, how we try to spread the information about principles, even though those signs are more reminders something we have so we try to explain principles uh, dif differently so that's what it, it, it is important and it always was important in violent to create this culture of continuous improvement and uh, maybe to close it with where we are going as our production system is continuously improving and we went from implementing tools like software management software boards and KPIs, then lean tools. Then in 2017, there was a break even point when we went, okay, we need to focus more on culture, I think, speaking about behaviors and how actually culture is visible, maybe speaking about KBIs, key behavioral indicators, how we can track that. And after that journey, we realized, okay, maybe we are quite good in continuous improvement, but are we really improving towards lean? Is the lean this, true north where we are going. And we realized that, okay, continuous improvement and lean are two separate things, actually. You might continuously improve and not and never become lean. But I don't know if you can become lean if, without uh, continuously improving. So what's the future of Island Group production system? It's difficult to tell right now, but what I can tell you for sure, we would like to focus more on letting people see the lean or letting, pe letting people or learn or teaching people to see with the lean Googles. So do the continuous improvement towards uh, operational excellence, toward implementation of, of lean and going really on operational level and maybe even starting with the simple definitions. Do we really have a Kanban system? Do we really have a milk run? Do we really have a supermarket? And things like that to challenge and to explain once again, what's what's the basic? Of course, we have a industry 4.0 kind of department or a way that we want to digitalize and improve, but that's kind of another story to, to speak about. So that's probably the, the future of, of bilingual reproduction system, focusing more on lean on, on operational level. But what the future will be, maybe we'll meet again in 10 years time and I'll tell you that when we will become 20s and not just a teenager. <laughs> so that's from my side. Thank you so much for attention. I um, will be more than happy to answer your questions. So feel free to, to ask. We have one question from our first guest, <laughs> Bjorn. Happy to hear again about you. Do you involve maintenance department when it comes to continuous improvement in production? That's the question of Bjorn. 
That's a good question. That's what I should ask Bjorn. <laughs> he's, he's the expert in, in maintenance. Uh, as we try to have TPM, we would like our maintenance guys to be improvers mm -hmm. and our operators to be to be maintenance guys, actually, in, in, in a small topics. So if I answer yes, that would be partially true. So partially, yeah, we involve, but I cannot say that all the time. That's that's what we're aiming for. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but do you also, I, I hope it's okay that I just speak here now. Free. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, um, interesting answer. Thank you for that. But do you also emphasize your plan coaches to directly involve maintenance department to ask for their inputs, to ask for value could be created for maintenance as well? Yeah, absolutely. It's not like they cannot pick the maintenance. <laughs> but um, good point, actually. Thanks to, for mentioning that. At the beginning, I said that Valen Group Rex is, focus, focus, is focusing only on production. But after a time, yeah, we cannot do that without the logistic quality is more mm. than important and the maintenance, definitely. So having a TPM is actually one of the uh, BPS tools in our toolbox. So we actually, that's what we want to see. That's what we want to have. And plan coaches are more than familiar with our tools and TPM as well. Yeah, so you're talking about the, the entire system of um, of Lean or of VPS in the end, huh? to see all the synergies from all departments that are considered. Yep. I, I hope it was not diplomatic answer. <laughs> I didn't want to have a diplomatic. <laughs> it was great. Thank you. Maybe I can add also some experience because now I'm establishing a food producer company. And there exactly we have the continuous improvement system everywhere in all the departments, also the maintenance. Like currently there is a competition uh, between the departments in a Kaizen proposals and the maintenance department is separated team, let's say. So, okay. and they are bringing amazing uh, proposals for the energy saving. So all the very specific technical department is bringing this. Then also the production maintenance is a separated team. So they can bring some examples of uh, preventive maintenance, improvements and so on. And they are interesting. It's, they're very active. Okay, so using a gamification approach. That's mm -hmm. also really kind. Oh, it's interesting, smart. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I see that uh, we don't have other specific questions, but maybe another question, Marek. Uh, you were showing the shop floor management and you were thinking about the future. Uh, isn't it already uh, obsolete to track the data on the papers, uh, on the physical boards? You know, it's now the big question, like double rewriting. And there is a lot of proposals from the technical companies for the digital board, digital OBEA. What's the, your point of view? Yeah, I show you physical board, but we already have a pilot with the digital board, which you actually want to transfer digital board, uh, physical board into digital ones. But uh, the thing is that maybe sometimes you need data to have more on shop floor than in some software or somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be visible on shop floor and people need to know on show floor, not to run somewhere, not to rely on a system. So to give you the answer that digitalization is the future, I, I'm, I personally don't believe in that. So I believe that some data need to be present on the show floor and need to be created on show floor and visible to people on show floor. Mm -hmm. With digitalizing everything, there is a big risk. When system is down, you don't have information you cannot produce. So you are in a big risk. So having people, having the important, not all the values or important values available on the show floor in the handwritten form, it will always be valid in lean production, mm -hmm. not putting everything digitally. But we are improving. So why to draw something by hand if you can have it digitalized? But we need to assure another thing that people understand what is digitalized. Mm -hmm. So they understand the number. They are not take it for granted. So it was calculated for sure true. So that's the risk with digitalization. <laughs> You're right. Maybe if other viewers has uh, another opinion or want to add something, can can anyway write to the chat. Feel free. Uh, we are running out of the time. Uh, we still have 29 uh, visitors. What is beautiful? 
just for your information, Marek, we were in some moment 41. So thank you a lot for your speech. We are all, all this time here at your disposal. Feel free to write us the, the private message and happy to meet you in another occasion. And thank you, Marek, for sharing. My pleasure. My pleasure. And Thanks. it was nice to see you, Björn. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to see you. Thank you very much for the insights. <laughs> thank <So>. you. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. Bye bye. Nice to say bye. Bye. Uh, okay. So, are we closing the session, right? Yes. Cool. Veronica, thank you so much for <laughs> facilitation and asking questions and creating polls. Thank you. Thank you too for this. And I will bring you some inspirations uh, for this digitalization next time, since you know that we are planning a huge uh, transformation mm -hmm. of the software digitalization with one software tool. We are now in testing phase. It's cool. really wow. And we have one more question. Why does the VPS focus only on production-related areas? My... Thank you for that question. And I think that's uh, something which is against <laughs> VPS. So I know we need to be thinking outside the production as well. That's currently the setup. That's something we'll live with. And uh, the decision was taken 10 years ago. So now we're becoming teenagers. I hope also this will change. <laughs> so we'll... We will yeah, spread to other areas as well. Which one will be the next one? The most important based on your opinion. <sighs> Finance, no. HR, <laughs> controlling. R&D and procurement. Those two are quite important mm -hmm. ones. We are, yeah. Actually, we're going quite good with logistic. That's what we, emphasize, what we emphasize a lot mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. And um, quality important, but R&D and purchasing, we still see some gaps in something where we can need to go. And I see Anton, yeah. Anton friend, agree. <laughs> friend of mine. <laughs> Thank you, Anton, fully agree with R&D, yeah. So design for manufacturing, mm -hmm. that, that's very important next step. It is. Thanks, good luck. Thanks, Heiko. I remember one example from uh, Virpool. Design uh, for uh, man, uh, for manufacturing, or but also for, for the um, DFX for the design. Okay. For the parts, because uh, they were demounting all the washing machine, and really choosing which particular element is necessary and which is not, which two can be connected and produced as ones. So take. Uh, from one supplier. This was very interesting also, mm -hmm. the Lean application. So uh, kind of design of experiments, right? So uh, Not so much because design of experience is just going deep in, in a method and uh, re... Uh, uh, it's connected to the machine. Yes. But this was more with the assembly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or simplify this. So design for manufacturing, design for assembly. Yeah. <laughs> next, <laughs> next yes, step. And I see that we still have 13 viewers. <laughs> it's very nice that you are with us. Maybe we are funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a strange accent. No, where are the people coming from? <laughs> yeah, maybe we should start to talk in Slovak and it will be like the, the language uh, window. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Heiko. Thank you. In any case, we are here. You can put the questions even if we will be offline. So it's okay. Thank you, Marek. Bye. Bye.